Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Scripture Reflection. My name is Reverend Karen from Roberts and Wesley United Church in Edmonton, Alberta, and I'm here with several people who are on Zoom with me, so you will hear voices but not see faces. We hope if you're joining us online that you will participate as much as you are willing and able, and if you can add your comments in the comment box, I will share them with the group. If you would like to join the group on Zoom, you can always contact the church office and ask for the Zoom link and you will then get to see the faces. Um, so we use a technique called Lexio Divina where we read through one passage of scripture that we're gonna use on the coming Sunday. And we read through it three times. And each time we read through it, we actually focus our attention on a different, in a different way as we read through it. And then we spend some time in silent reflection and then we share with one another. And so the point of this exercise is to get the collective wisdom of anyone who's participating um, in this time together to share what we're gleaning and discovering and so know that there's no right or wrong answer uh, you don't need to be a biblical scholar um, we're here to ask questions and explore with one another so we like to begin by creating sacred space and so if you have a candle or something at home to kind of create a a bit of a, an altar for yourself. That's always helpful when we're doing these types of practices. I'm gonna light a candle and remind us that God is with us always um, and is there as a guide and an inspiration as we sit in silence and reflect together. We have a, a common prayer that we use at each of our gatherings together, so I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. God of all creation, we offer you our thanksgiving for a time rich with connections among each other and with you. We thank you for moments when we have experienced what it is to be united, even in our differences. Help us to grow as a listening, discerning, learning people. Help us to give up patterns and structures that enslave us and others. Help us to acknowledge our fear and lean into your hope and your courage. Help us to grow in our trust in each other and in your spirit. Fill us with your grace and with your wisdom, with your patience and with your love. Propel us into your future rooted in the richness of our past. In Christ we pray. Amen. So we're going to read a passage from the Hebrew Scriptures, which is the Old Testament, specifically the prophet Jeremiah. And we'll start at chapter 17, verse 5 to 10. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Please know that you can read from whatever version of the Bible you have at home, online, or feel free to just listen. Um, we try to use inclusive language in the United Church, and so I might be changing a bit of, of the gender-specific pieces if they exist. As we read through this the first time together, I want you to focus on feelings. Focus only on how this passage makes you feel or what feelings are evoked for you as you hear these words. So it's coming from Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 to 10, and it says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart 
to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doing. Let's spend some time in silent reflection and then we'll share with each other what feelings were evoked for us as we heard this passage today.
We just finished reading through Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 to 10 once. And this first time through, we were focusing on how this passage makes us feel or what feelings get evoked for us. And so I'm going to open it up to everyone to share what feelings, um, as you are willing, those of you on Zoom, you've been muted, so you'll need to unmute yourselves. So what feelings came up as you heard this passage? Well, I found verses five and six very disquieting, but then uh, verses seven and eight uh, filled me with a feeling of serenity. a bit of insecurity I it's kind of vague about a heart is deceitful and yet you're going to be have your heart searched and I don't think that well I don't imagine there's anybody with a perfect heart out there <laughs> Jeremiah writing during the exile. Mm -hmm. So he's probably talking about what he's seen around him. I um, I felt lifted up when I read about trusting in the Lord, especially the tree having no worries in a year of drought, but also with its roots reaching out, I see wisdom, you know, because it's it's trusting in something greater than just what is. It knows enough to reach out to, for the water. And I think when I trust in God, my state of mind rises above, above my worries. <laughs> I feel how glad I am. I'm sorry. I feel how glad I am. I like metaphors and not analogies. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yes. But Karen, I'm saying goodbye now. Okay, bye, Karen. Yeah. Any other feelings people wanted to share? Well, this reminds me of my mother. That's what my mother always taught me. This, or, I mean. She didn't go on and on about people and what they could be like, but she said, trust in God is the most important thing. So I just felt like, here's my mom's words. You know. <laughs> so a bit of comfort then? Yes, for sure. Yeah. And I, I like uh, um, verse 7, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Yeah. That's a, a reversal for me. I, I never thought of it like that. And I get some reassurance, some hope. Okay. Well, we're going to read through this a second time. This time through, what I want you to focus on is a word or phrase that's just staying with you that you can't quite let go of. Um, so I'm going to read through it, and then we'll spend some time in silent reflection, and then we'll share with each other. And this is coming from Jeremiah again, chapter 17, starting at verse 5. And it says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals, and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places in the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. 
In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. What word or phrase caught your attention, and why do you think that might be? We'll spend some time in silent reflection, and then we'll share with one another.
we've just read through the scripture a second time and this time we were focusing on a word or a phrase that was catching our attention and then reflecting on why that might be staying with us so love to hear from everybody reminding those of you on zoom that you were muted what word or phrase caught your attention Janet, you're muted. So Max, Max came in and oh. said, why, why did you turn it off? I was listening to it. It was interesting. <laughs> well, I said, I didn't turn it off. She stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> My turn now. Yeah, I really, that whose trust is the Lord struck me really, really quickly. But I like the next bit too. Um, they shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. This is about the third time, third time at least this week, that that image or metaphor or whatever has come to my attention somehow or other. Once in a book, once in a passage on TV, or thing on TV, where don't water the leaves, water the roots. <laughs> you want a tree or a plant to grow was the, the basic message there. And um, so I've been trying to think how I can water my roots better. And those of other people, especially my grandchildren. Arlene, are you talking? If you are, you're muted. Can't really see your mouth. It looked like you were, but I like the first part of it. Just very simple. Trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Trust. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. It's very simple. Well, I didn't water my hair this morning. In case you're wondering. <laughs> what this towel is for. <laughs> Anybody else have a word or phrase that caught their attention? The word parch. The last time I was in Spain and traveling down the back roads, it was so evident. The erosion of the soil, the failure to take care of the soil, it was just heartbreaking. And that's, that's climate change. And it's our stupidity in thinking that we know more than Mother Earth does. Um, me, I focused again on, uh, yeah, I focused again on the tree. And, you know, when you say a word or a phrase, then I go, okay, what phrase? Because I was looking at the few verses there. And I looked at the phrases, does not fear and has no worries. It's a reminder. <laughs> I remember that uh, uh, Jane, when, uh, somewhere, some part of Sunday school, I went home with a picture of a tree by the water. Yeah, uh, I could see, yes, a good feeling. One of the things that I find fascinating is the way this, this uh, scripture section is written, where you have what I call fearful things on the one side, uh, thus says the Lord cursed, etc. And then on the other side, from verse 7 on, we have, blessed are those who trust. So you can kind of see them side by side there. Um, um, I don't know whether I've got any proofs to there or, or did, but um, and then I love the, the caution about the heart. The heart is devious. The heart can change whether you know it or not. 
Um, but then I, I, I see going back up to bless by those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. But my little faith, you know. I also picked for a, like a tree planted by water. What I was thinking of is the importance of having a faith in the spirit to keep us rooted and strengthened. Um, I think that that gives us hope when we're getting really discouraged. Awesome. Well, we are going to read through this a third time. And this third time through, hold on to everything you've heard from people so far. Um, and then we're, we're focusing on what message you think the Holy Spirit has for us today in our time and place, for us as individuals or as a, a collective community. Um, what, what's God trying to say to us today? What's the message is the question. What is the message? So I'm going to read through this a third time. And this is from Jeremiah chapter 17, starting at verse 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious and does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doing. What message does this passage have for us today in our time? Let's spend some time in silent reflection and then we'll share with one another.
finished reading through Jeremiah 17 a third time, and this time we are focusing on what message this scripture might have for us. Again, those of you who are joining us online, feel free to add your comments and I'll share them with the group. Those of you who are in the Zoom, you've been muted. So what, what wisdom are we receiving? What's the message we're hearing today? For me, it is just trust, period. Yeah, I got me a different. It's trust I'm in the Lord. in a different direction. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. I think there was I my mind went a different direction. I just got messages from my kayaking group. And then they say trees planted by the waters. Well, trees planted by the waters are washed away in the flood. And, and then it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked and the what to follow. <laughs> so I guess my message is not to get too complacent, I guess. I don't know what I'm seeing there, but I thought I was joining those two together. Okay. Jane? Oh, well, I, I, I mean, are you getting back to me? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, I was saying about, you know, about the verse about trust in the Lord. Plus, I read another verse or another in my devotion today. It said you can control some of what happens today, but an awful lot of it is beyond your control. Do what you can. Let go of what needs to be let go of and wait expectantly and that's trusting in the lord and there's one more little bit here and it was a quote that said patience is not the ability to wait but the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting <laughs> it's a good yeah, reminder that, yes <laughs> i think it's a bit of an admonition watch out um, the Lord tests the mind and the heart so he knows what we're up to so trust in him that he's going to get you if you're bad <laughs> but, uh, but I, I think the idea that trusting in the Lord in terms of his love is uh, another thing but uh, yeah, it's it's a toughie. Nancy, do you remember the River Jordan and going yeah. there? This muddy, muddy little stream, mm -hmm. but it's surrounded by greenery. So the message is there in a land that was pretty dry. You get right down to it, but the River Jordan was doing its thing for the Lord. Well, there are trees that belong on the prairie, and there, there are trees that grow down by the water. And we live in a neighborhood called Wolf Willow. Well, where does Wolf Willow grow? Down by the water. And that's why yeah. this neighborhood has to have a sump pump in their basement, you know. It's quite interesting. But to me, this is a promise and a warning. Mm hmm mm hmm Yes, absolutely. So my concept of not being too complacent fits with that. Yeah. Yes. Yep. The theme of this play, this particular piece for me is in whom shall I trust? Yes. Um, in, the, in these times of fake news and very persuasive advertising and lots of bullying tactics how should we behave we had a house guest this past week a former member of roberts and wesley a very good friend in fact he's the fellow who donated the baby grand in the memorial hall and he's had going through a rather rough patch in his life right now and he told me he just has to trust in the Lord. 
the only thing that's getting him through. Oh. Yeah, I was really caught today by the line that said, in the year of drought, it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. And thinking about how in some ways COVID has been a bit of a drought um, from a ministerial perspective in the sense that, you know, as a, a faith community, we haven't been able to do a lot of what we've done in the past. Um, and, and yet there's been so much anxiousness and anxiety and fear during this time. And, and thinking about when we're rooted in God, then we don't need to be anxious because we'll, we'll still be able to bear fruit, which we have throughout this time of COVID. So people were thinking, you know, the church is going to die, no one's going to come back. And yet that hasn't been the case. Um, and that's where that trust for me in God is so important to turn back to God. Yeah, look at fellowship yesterday, all the people who came. Just about everybody who was in church came. That was we were thinking, well we put out too much stuff. <laughs> never. We never put out too much stuff in fellowship. That's true. <laughs> yeah, people were happy. Mm -hmm. To have a chance to see each other. Any other thoughts about the scripture? Not really, not for me. We'll know that we, we, we spend time reflecting on this throughout the week um, as we prepare for Sunday. And so, so think about times when you've trusted in God and times when maybe you haven't and, and how what were the outcomes for you? Um, but yeah, as we, as we close our time together, I invite us to say, hi, we, um, the Lord's Prayer together in whatever language is most familiar to you. So let us pray together. Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I hope that those of you online will join us on Sunday for worship at 1030, and I hope you have a really good week. Thanks, and bye. Thank you.